Welcome to Type Toon Tint. I'm Tom Kranz. Superheroes and supervillains are the purview of today's guest, Bob Budiansky, a comic book artist, writer, and editor who contributed to creating the towering Transformers, supervised the Spider-Man franchise, and left his mark in the Marvel Comics universe for 20 years. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Type Toon Tint for 2023. And it's a good one today. Uh, we are in the tint part of Type Toon Tint, which usually means an artist, visual arts. And joining me today is, uh, as I said in my intro, Bob Budiansky. Uh, Bob is a neighbor of mine here in Fanwood, New Jersey. Uh, in addition to being uh, a talented career artist and graphic designer, uh, he currently holds the position of recreation director for our town, uh, which is actually a huge job because he basically oversees a boatload of programs from pickleball lessons to uh, drawing classes to to pretty much the use of, of our recreation buildings. But we're here to talk uh, mostly about his art, how he got started in his art. And Bob, first of all, uh, hi and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Tom. Happy to be here. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm speaking to Bob. Uh, we're both in our palatial estates in Fanwood, New Jersey today, coming up on the new year here today. Um, Bob, uh, I was really fascinated by one of the courses that he that he did for in his capacity as recreation director that passed May in May of 2022. He did a course called Comic Book Art or the Art of Comics. And I said, what could that possibly be? And so I showed up. And I learned all kinds of things about Bob that you're going to learn today in this podcast episode. Bob spent 20 years at Marvel Comics uh, doing everything from drawing to editing to writing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, um, and we're going to show you some samples of things that Bob has done. My first question is, how did you get started as, a, as an illustrator and in art? Was it a kid thing? Did you always know you wanted to do it, or did you just pick up pencils and, and markers and paints when you were five, or when did that start? Uh, yeah, I think you kind of nailed it there in your question. I basically started when I was around five or maybe earlier. I just liked to draw, and uh, I just drew all the time when I was, you know, when I was growing up, and I read comic books, and I used to copy images out of the comics, come up with my own comic books. I, my mom would buy me um, pads of typewriter paper when typewriter paper came in pads, when there were such things as typewriters. And um, and I would just go through those pads and make up my own stories and draw them and from beginning to end and use up a pad and get another pad and another pad and so on. And so I just I just loved to draw when I was a little kid and I just continued drawing um, uh, up until I worked at Marvel. Uh, I was I was working for my college newspaper as a graphic arts editor and, a, and, a, and an artist doing illustrations for the newspaper, um, which came out three times a week. So I, I, my, my hobby as a kid turned into uh, my extracurricular activity by the time I got to college. And then um, I soon got a job at Marvel. So as a kid drawing and painting and doing, you know, whatever your art wanted you to do, did you find yourself being nurtured by your family and by teachers? Is this something that you were encouraged to do or was, you know, the message you got, ah, you can't make a living at that, you know, you know, go be a pipe fitter or something. I would I would say uh, I was I was I certainly got support. Like I said, my my mom was more than willing to uh, walk over to Woolworth Woolworth with me to get another pad of typewriter paper whenever I was running out. Uh, and uh, I was kind of um, an object of fascination among my cousins uh, because uh, I was the youngest of all my first cousins, and um, and so I was this kid who always drew. And I was you know I wasn't like professional grade artist, but compared to all the other cousins, I guess I was. Uh, I was pretty good. So like, oh, look, Bob's drawing this and he's drawing that, you know, and so I, I everybody loved what I was doing. And uh, throughout school, um, I remember in high school and I went to um, Bronx High School of Science, which is not known for its art programs. But I remember, uh, uh, you know, like I would be doodling in class and the, my social studies teacher would come over and look at it and say, you're not supposed to be doing that. Oh, that's pretty good. You know, <laughs> you know, doodling in the margins of my notebooks or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I never had anybody push back against me uh, drawing. It was just the opposite. Yeah. But on the other hand, I never thought I would make a living out of it um, as I got 
a little older into high school, I thought, well, I'm, you know, so I went to science, I went to Bronx science. I thought I'd be a, a, a civil engineer when I grew up. Oh, really? So you went to school, you didn't go to college for art per se then, correct? My degree is in bachelor's, I have a bachelor's of engineering and uh, civil engineering. And really? I, and I have a, and I stayed one year for a master's program in transportation engineering. I mean, I remember in junior high school, I decided I want to be a comic book artist when I grew up. When I got to high school, I thought, well, that's unrealistic. Um, you know, I'll follow my brother's, my older brother's foot uh, path. He was an electrical engineer. Uh, I like civil engineering, so I'll study that. So I got to college, I studied civil engineering, and then I got to, uh, started, I started doing a master's program after I graduated, and then I, and then I dropped out. <laughs> you dropped out, but you went to work, correct? Yeah, right. I had a, I got a job at Marvel Comics, an entry level editorial position. And so, working at Marvel Comics, and what year was that? We talking sixties, May seventy six. Okay, so that must have been quite a rush getting a job at Marvel Comics. I mean, they were base. It was Marvel and DC Comics in those days, basically, right? Yeah, pretty much. That was the two, the big two, and yeah, it was great. Like, uh, it was. Uh, kind of a dream come true. Like I said, in junior high, I, I aimed to become a comic book artist. And, uh, and then I kind of put that on the way, so, you know, put that on the side thinking that's not going to happen. It's not realistic. Uh, you know, who, who, who does that for a living? And, um, and then it came about that I got a job there. I had a half hour interview over the telephone. I was in Buffalo, New York <laughs> and my, the Marvel's base, base, base in Manhattan still is. And, uh, so I get on the phone with, uh, my, my soon to be, um, uh, boss, um, and he's interviewing me, and he says, "Well, and I, I visited the offices uh, once or twice uh, over the holidays um, prior to that." And, and my my prospective boss said, "Well, I really wish I could meet you in person, but uh, you know, a couple of guys here said they know you, and they, they say they say they say good things about you." So after a half hour interview, I got the job, and uh, and I, I was on a Wednesday, and in May, in May of '76, and the following Monday, I was working there. So you got a job over the phone essentially yes yes yeah never met my boss until i walked in the office wow my boss awesome. was uh my boss is Latin, a guy named larry lieber who's still with us wonderful guy uh his brother is stan lee oh that's stan lee that's stan lee yeah but his, wow his, his mr spider-man younger, his younger brother larry lieber was my first oh that's pretty awesome yeah. so um another thing i learned uh at the class that you gave and i've, I've got a photograph of you doing uh doing that you you um you held up uh, one of your transformer covers, one person kind of did the drawing part and then other people did the coloring part or the, I guess the, what, what you call, is that the inking part? Well, inking and coloring are two different things. So, so there's this picture of you showing the class, uh, your drawing of a transformer cover on the left there. And on the right, you see the colored part in there. You did which? So basically I was a pencil artist. So the pencil artist is the, not to brag, it's the primary artist of any piece of comic book artwork. Uh, the pencil artist is the guy who conceives, uh, or the gal, uh, the guy or gal who conceives of what the artwork is gonna look like and draws what that artwork is gonna be in pencil. And then it goes to an ink artist. An ink artist, I hate to use the word trace because that's what people think, so think it is, but e each, each inker uh, is a very talented artist, uh, him or herself. And um, they bring their own um, particular style, uh, and finishing the artwork. So they take that gray pencil art, they put black India ink over the pencil art to bring it bring it to the foreground, give it life, really bring, pump it up. And then the coloring is a completely different job, it goes to a color, uh, a color artist. Uh, nowadays with, with, um, with so much being done on computers, sometimes those jobs get merged a bit more. Like from what I understand, ink, ink artists aren't as primary as it used to be. You were the editor on the very first Transformers mini series in 1984. And was that was essentially the debut of the Transformers comic book? Oh, yes, definitely. Yes. So okay. And so then that's what you were most associated with, would you say? Uh, it, it turned out that way. It wasn't like my um, it wasn't my mind. That was like seven years after after I started at Marvel. So I had done a lot of other things prior to that popping up. And then I did a lot of things after that. But in uh, 19, November of 83, uh, I was an editor. I was no longer an entry-level editor. I was a full editor. Um, and um, uh, my boss, uh, Jim Shooter, who's the editor-in-chief, came to me and said, uh, we have this toy property we want to develop into a comic book. 
um, you know, you're going to be the editor of the mini series. So the mini series is sort of like a tryout. We don't know if these things are going to take off or not. Hmm. Somebody at Marvel, the publisher, or somebody makes a deal with a with an with, a, with an outside partner. In this case, Hasbro Toys, um, and and Hasbro says, okay, you know, we have this new toy. It's going to be great, you know. And they make a deal, and Marvel says, okay, we'll put out a comic book. So after four issues of which is what I edited uh, of Transformers comic book in the early eighty early eighty four. Um, uh, it was decided that was a big hit. There's a whole history of Transformers. So, ha sure. so basically, Hasbro went to um, this. This this has nothing to do with me or Marvel for that matter. Hasbro went to um, uh, Japan, Japan, I guess. There were two Japanese toy companies called Bandai and uh, Takara, who mm -hmm. were already putting out these these robotic toys that transformed into various forms, like you know, jet fighters and cars and all sorts of other things. And basically what Hasbro did was made some kind of deal where they just took these toys that already existed and rebranded them as the Transformers. Okay. Then they came to Marvel and said, Marvel, we want you to come up with a story that that create, you know, create a story that explains who these characters are and 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 then develop it into a comic book. And then separately we want to develop it into an animated uh, television show. And it was a whole multi-pronged media effort on Hasbro's part. And, and Mars, Marvel's part was to develop the story, and then it eventually came to me to develop the characters and edit the comic book. So then Transformers became a regular monthly comic book like many others. Yes. And you ended up writing uh, most of the of the next 51 issues of the, of the regular comic book. By writing, does that mean you actually wrote, not only came up with the story and the pencil drawings, but you actually wrote the copy and the stuff in the balloons, or what does that mean that you wrote? Well, writing is, I mean, you're writing a story. So yeah, I came up with the plot and I wrote the dialogue. I did not draw the comic book. I drew some of the covers. I got you. Yeah, I, I did draw, draw a few covers here and there, but I left it to other artists to handle the monthly chore of drawing a comic book, which I, I would have found impossible since I was a full-time editor. Oh, really? Why? Because just of time? Oh, yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Drawing a comic book for most artists is a full time. If it's a monthly comic book, it's a full time job. So that's drawing every single one of those cells is a separate drawing, I'm guessing. Well, it's a, I mean, here, this is, I don't know, if it, this, is a, this is this is a page of comic book artwork. OK, these are panels. So a page like this would take me. This is Ghost Rider, it's not Transformers. Um, a page like this could take me a day to draw. Is that right? So an entire comic book would take a week, say? No, an entire comic book would take a month. <laughs> For not, you know, Some artists are faster than others. Okay. But um, to draw a full comic book, uh, 20 to 22 pages, uh, you know, do the math, there's 30 days in a month with, with, with weekends off, hopefully. That's a month's work. More with Bob Budiansky in just a moment. Hey, Type Tune Tint listeners, my name is Paul Farvar, and I'm the host of the Singles Only Podcast. Singles Only Podcast is where I interview guests, mostly comedians, sometimes actors, musicians, authors, and sometimes just your average Joe. They tell us about their dating lives, their relationship goals and journeys, often hilarious, sometimes serious, always entertaining. Give it a try. It's only about 30 minutes of your time. You got nothing to lose everything to gain singles only podcast available everywhere you podcast everywhere you listen to type tune tint you can also find singles only podcast or go to singles only podcast.com to find out more find out why the chicago reader voted singles only podcast the best podcast last year singles only podcast.com thank you another one of your uh one of the distinctions under your belt here is that you you edited or oversaw spider-man for a number of years so when you're an editor you are responsible for the creative team that is on the book and for guiding uh, the overall story arc so if i mean you, you want your writer um to really come up with all of this material not you now in the case of spider-man by the time I became the editor of the Spider-Man comic book, it was not just a comic book. There were four different Spider-Man titles a month. Mm. And there were related titles that came out every month that were part of the greater Spider-Man family. So basically, I was overseeing about a dozen titles a month, and I had a staff of probably a half a dozen other editors uh, assisting and getting these books 
out. Here's a here's an artist question. What yeah. is different about about comic book art than other forms of art than doing regular still lifes or doing portraits or doing anything else? If you're doing a portrait, you are doing a portrait based on somebody who's either sitting in front of you or a photograph of that person. Comic books, most artists do draw from memory. They don't have um, a person sitting in front of them or whatever. You know, they're, they're drawing cars and planes and and people. And, and as you know, comic book art, especially superhero art, can be very kinetic. So they're, create, they're creating all of these almost impossible to duplicate actions on the part of a lot of these characters as they go through their motions. Mm. And they're doing it all out of their head. And not completely. Like There's nothing wrong with referring to... Uh, a photograph of an actual jet airplane if you have to draw a real sure airplane. but um but 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 basically comic book artists are coming up with all of this stuff out of their own tr training you know that they know how to put all this material together and make you know put it together to make a panel well training and imagination too of course right? I mean, of course imagine it yeah coming up with the ideas and that, that enters into the next part which is the, the, the main thing that separates comic book art for other types of illustrative art is that you're telling a story. The artist is, the pencil artist is telling a story. So what we call storytelling in the business. So you're acting as the equivalent of a movie director. You are staging, you are staging this, this story, these, these different scenes, which are the same thing as panels of artwork. You are coming up with a way to communicate visually what the story is. To, to go from panel to panel to see what the character or characters are going through, to show their emotions, to show them interacting in different ways. Whatever the story demands, it's up to the artist to figure out how to depict that within these panels. So it's akin to doing a storyboard for a movie director, for example. Very much so. Yes, yes. There, there's a lot. In fact, a lot of comic book artists have moved into um, storyboarding and mm -hmm. probably vice versa. Yes. What most of fan would know you for is uh the kind of the art that you practice now which is you do a lot of flyers you do posters uh any one of the big events that you have that you promote you basically promote yourself you do your own artwork what, and i guess i'm assuming that you're not actively drawing comic characters anymore am i correct in there uh, not quite i do commission artwork so people so what's, people find me what, what, oh this is on my desk. These, okay. are, these are commission requests. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I have more more here and I have more on a list. So, so people I, will ask you for a specific character or specific. Yeah, exactly. or something? yeah, it's like, you know, a customer's always right. So whatever they want me to draw, I'm a, I'm a hot pair of hired hands. If they want me to draw something and I feel capable of doing it, I'll do it. I mean, oh. I'll do it very slowly because I have other things to do, but uh, I'll get, you know, eventually hopefully get around to, to drawing these different commissioned artwork. So um, you did covers for Ghost Rider comics, correct? I did covers. I eventually did the interiors as well. Okay. And then um, you created, if I'm not mistaken here, the character of Sleepwalker, correct? That is correct. Okay. And, and how did that, is that a comic book that's still available out there? Um, Sleepwalker um, came and went back in the early 90s. Okay. 33 issues, which is almost three years. Okay. And he's popped up here and there as a guest star he had a little mini series a few years ago um Seriously. so it, it's it's varied over the years uh i'm not uh really connected to it anymore i got it um you know they don't it's not like marvel calls me up and says hey we want to use sleepwalker in this way or that way is that okay with you they don't check with me but uh, they did do a uh, they made an action figure correct yeah so marvel um, made a deal with um hasbro toys again i wasn't involved in the in the, in the negotiations but Hasbro comes out with these collectible legend series toys every so often apparently and earlier this year in the doctor strange multiverse of madness collection uh, sleepwalker <laughs> appeared there he is well that must be cool to see your creation live as a toy now right oh, it was great oh i love it yes I mean, i'm I, sure you've gotten tons of royalties from that correct i'm waiting for the check uh, that's what i thought is that why you're up. still the recreation director in i, family, I will correct? I do have a deal where, that, where I get something, but I haven't, I, you know, I'm assuming at the end of the year, they say they count up the money or whatever, and they cut me a check. But. Oh, that's cool. So um, that was actually a toy that was available out yeah. there. I don't know if it, I'm not yeah. in the toy buying business anymore because my kids are older, but uh, I think that's, that's really cool. What, um, so 
you do commission artwork now. Right. Um, but I also see that you go to a lot of the comic con type conventions and I'm guessing that you, you hook up there with friends and colleagues from your past life. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. That's one of the big appeals to going to these places. So yeah, I've been for the, for the last, um, uh, I don't know, 15, 15 years or so I've been doing these convention gigs and uh, they're fun. Well, the class that you conducted here in Fanwood for the recreation department was, was really great. It was one of the highlights of, I, you know, I do public information for our town here and I take pictures and report on lots of these activities. And I was just fascinated by that whole thing. This was basically done in a recreation building. It was maybe what, 20, 25 kids couple of parents and you basically demonstrated the art of like from the very beginning and you had you know even simple things like you know drawing a circle and making it into a three-dimensional object like not just a circle but a ball and doing things like making things three-dimensional that was a very basic a very basic yeah. lesson but it was like you know that's like the basis of pretty much you know everything you do you know you're not just drawing flat panel two-dimensional um two-dimensional figures and heroes and scenes and whatnot. Did you enjoy that teaching thing? I, I got the feeling that you did, and I hope you do it again this coming year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely enjoy um, sharing whatever I can with people who are interested in that subject. So in this case, uh, how, to, how to draw comic books. And uh, yeah, I have a great, I, I, I have a ball doing it. I've, I've taught classes and, and I, I do these seminars, which is what you're talking about. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a, it's been it's been fun. It's a nice skill to have, and um, and I think a lot of people uh, look at artwork like comic book artwork and can't imagine that somebody actually does this. And then right. when, I, when I bring it to a class like this, I say, "Well, here's how you do it." It's not like it, it's it's not it maybe a secret. You may not know the the basics, the fundamentals of, that go into this, but it's not magic either. But they learn it's doable. You exactly. mentioned earlier the uh you know it's a digital age now and i'm guessing that pretty much most if not all comic book art or graphic book uh whatever we call them now is done on computers and it's done with adobe illustrator and whatnot is that the case and do you do you think that the art has suffered or gotten better as a result of that the digitization of the art <clears throat> well <clears throat> Uh, there, there, there's different factors that go into um, digital artwork. So most artists still draw with a pencil, but many artists draw on a tablet. Either way, you need to be an artist. You can't have the, the computer do the work for you, although actually there is a new program out which is very controversial, which is creating uh, uh, artificial intelligence generated art. Yeah, and writing artificial <laughs> intelligence plots and movie plots too. And right, that's, that's a separate discussion but yeah, yeah right that's another podcast um, uh, <laughs> so some artists uh can draw on a tablet uh which means that they're drawing directly uh digitally and right onto right onto their computer monitor basically um uh, but where the where the artwork really becomes digitized is um the, the coloring process hmm. so whether you draw with a pencil and ink or whether you draw on a tablet uh at some point the comic book is going to get colored and most coloring these days is drawn is done on a digital so every the artwork is scanned in when it's in the black and white form scanned in to a computer if it's not already digitized through a tablet and uh, it's colored uh using photoshop or a similar kind of coloring program so a lot of artists even if they end up doing digital coloring they will actually start by drawing with a pencil on a piece of white paper yeah, whatever they, whatever they feel comfortable doing it's not like it has to be digital from the very get from the get-go but at some point it's going to be digitized uh when it gets to probably the coloring stage at the very at the very least at the coloring stage it'll I be digitized. It. As, as well as the lettering which used to be all hand lettering that's all fonts that are created on a computer that are applied to the artwork i guess it's kind of comforting to me to know that even in the digital age it still requires imagination talent uh you know the certain skills of an artist even if you're using an electronic tablet uh bob i will be seeing you around fanwood uh Probably, it's yeah. going to be another 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 busy year for you i'm sure and for yeah. me as well but uh, i appreciate you spending some time with me here and uh happy new year a happy new year to you and it's been my pleasure to be here